Yeah, I was very fortunate uh, to play nine years uh, in the National Football League and go to six Super Bowls in those nine years. If, if I was to meet somebody in an airport or a restaurant or any speaking engagement I might be doing, and somebody does come up and ask me the question, then it always gets down to one play, and that's the Leon Lett play in Super Bowl 27. My name's Don Beebe, and this is my super story. Don Beebe, my super story. I played wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills in Super Bowl 27. Marv Levy used to say all the time, he says, how you react to something in every football game that you play really is going to reveal your character. And man, was he really, really spot on. And that day, you know, we're going to the third Super Bowl with the Buffalo Bills, and, uh, and this will be the first time we face the Dallas Cowboys, who was kind of an up-and-coming team in the, in the mid to early 90s. Just to give you a Reader's Digest thing of this, it was 52-17. to 17. I mean, we're getting whooped. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are not going to make another great comeback here. This game's over. There's about four or five minutes left in the game. And Frank Reich was in at that time. Jim Kelly got hurt. So Frank's in the quarterback, and he takes the snap, and and he moves up in the pocket, and D. Lyman of the Cowboys hits the ball out of Frank's hand and fumbles it. And next thing you know, Big 78, Leon Lett picks up the ball, and he's running for an apparent touchdown. So I just start running, and literally running right in front of the Dallas Cowboy bench. And this is the question I get most of the time is, what were you thinking as you were running down the field? <laughs> I tell people, I said, literally, I was thinking, how am I going to tackle this 300-pound giant of a man? And I was just going to jump on his back. But no, Leon, with about eight yards left, started to strut. And uh, he put the ball to one side. And as I saw the ball go out, you could see my attention go right to it. And I knocked the ball out of his hand. It went out of the back of the end zone at that time. Um, it, in NFL rules, it becomes the opposing team's ball at the 20-yard line going the other way. I'll be honest with you, initially, it meant nothing. You watch my reaction after I go down, and he kind of knees me in the head as he's going down, which didn't feel good. I get up, I adjust my helmet, and I'm not happy. You know, we're 52-17. Who could be happy at that time if you're a Buffalo Bill player or fan? Um, so, but when it really meant something to me was after the game was over and we're walking off, I mean, the guys are just dejected. I mean, three Super Bowls in a row, man. I mean, it's just, just an awful experience from a Super Bowl standpoint. And I get in the locker room, you know, it was dead quiet. And I saw these brown loafers walking up to me and my head was down and, and those loafers were only worn by one person and that was Ralph Wilson, the owner of the Buffalo Bills. He goes, Don, he says, I gotta tell you something. He said, um, what you did today meant so much to me, the Buffalo Bills, the organization, and all of our fans. Thank you so much for never giving up. And he called me son. I mean, he, he addressed me as son. He, he didn't say Don Beebe, he didn't say number 82, he said son. And so I knew it was something that meant a lot to him. I still today, I think it's what, 21, 22 years later after that Super Bowl, every single day I get fan mail letters uh, across the country, sometimes even globally, from people talking about this play. But there's a greater meaning than just winning a Super Bowl or winning any game. It's how you play the game and what you do with the game to impact people. It wasn't about me. It was about the platform and the gifts that God gave me to impact people through football. And I still, at 50 years old today, want to keep doing that.